consistent performers. We're ready for the draft of match one in this best of three. It's Lance off the board. Lance is off the board. TSM talks a lot about how important this hero is, and they believe he should either be picked or banned in every game. So they just went ahead and got rid of him this time, and Cloud9 is thinking about what to do in return. And it might be one of those drafts where all of the really, really strong heroes, the Lyras and the Adagios, get left open so that everyone gets a piece, but instead they take away the Lyra. Lyra says, well, choice. She's with a flex pick right now. I think she's stronger in the roam position, but Flash X picking up that Adagio there. Yeah, no surprise if you're going to ban Lyra and leave Adagio open. It's going to be a first pick when arguably best Chuck NA is the single best Adagio in all of North America. That's going to be fun to watch. And we see a Finn come through. I like to taking the Finn away from Flash X. It's such a playmaking hero. He's so strong right now. His win rate is through the roof. And I think Cloud9 taking this means not having the Adagio Finn combo won't be so oppressive. And they get the sky for the ability to move around the map really fast. Ooh, interesting. It's a Samuel that can be played out of the lane or the jungle shingy. Yeah, Samuel, I think be, we'll be seeing him in the lane. I think he'll do a little bit better, but it does depend on what laner that C9, Cloud9 will be picking up. Uh, but I, I will be ex expecting that Samuel in the lane there. The uh, TSM, they do this all the time. It's a very tricky look. We know how good Best Chuck is on Adagio, and we know that Von C could play Samuel out of the jungle. A Black Feather! It's our first Black Feather! A hero completely out of the meta right now, but Cloud9 does this kind of thing. They're trying to change it up here as we head into the first match of this series with a Black Feather. This is going to be something else. All right, I'm telling you, TSM, they're not ready for this Black Feather. We'll see how it plays out with the call. It's Action Jackson and Humanist. Thank you very much, Playoff Beard. Man, a Black Feather in the first game of this series. I could not be more excited to get this one underway. Humanist, you got to be looking forward to it, I'm right? I'm starry eyed. This is going to be nuts. These two teams clashing up against each other. The Black Feather coming into play. This is going to be fireworks. You know, we obviously talk to a lot of these teams before we actually kick off the uh, the weekend of games. And this is something we heard about on the down low. We did? It was one yeah. of those picks that might come out. It has come out. Talk to me a little bit about Black Feather in this matchup, right? In this game, how is it going to function? Well, I, you know, I think it's been off the radar for a lot of teams. But you look at uh, what Team Solomon have drafted. They're going to be looking to fight from range, kiting backwards oftentimes. And Hardik on this Black Feather will be able to close the gap and find the damage. He's actually already doing very well in lane against Best Chuck's Adagio. This is one of the matchups that uh, we actually expect Black Feather to struggle in a little bit, just because Adagio is so, so good in the early game. Already a bit of jungle pressure coming out from both teams, too. C9, look at the damage out of Joseph with those two crystal bits. Von C hasn't been able to shop yet. So he's going to be moving up towards the lane instead. Out of the two jungle pairs, I'm curious, who do you think has the edge? It's really tough. I think, you know, you look at Von C on the Samuel, he'll be fighting around the drifting dark cooldowns. If he's landing his skill shots, it's definitely going their way. If he's missing anything, if he gets forced out of his drifting dark, I think it very quickly switches over to the combo out of Cloud9. This is interesting from Cloud9. They move towards the lane, knowing now that TSM wants to shop, though they're making their rotation back. Top is very low on health already. Von C has that drifting dark. He picks up the first blood. Hardin, he might be going down here as well. Joseph needs to get out of there, but Von C picks up the kill. Woo! And he's at one and a half minutes. Team Solo mid, Sean Cloud9, who's boss in the early game. Man, they started off quick right there. I think Cloud9 just really underestimating the damage output potential. Both the Samuel and the Adagio can pump this damage out right now and just showing right there. Man, that was a big play coming out of Team Solo mid for this early game. They're going to be looking to do what they can with that advantage. It's fairly substantial for this early point in the game. You know, they're sitting at 4.2 thousand to the 3.7 of Cloud9. Now that they've got some pressure in the jungle too, they're going to look to snowball that. C9 with the interesting play here, putting all three people up in the lane. They just want to shove up this wave. Where are they going to move from here? Well, it depends. They might look to do a little bit of uh, babysitting around the lane, especially Hardik Whoa. taking a lot of damage right here. Let's see if they can close the gap. Yeah, the splash damage doing so much work on the Joseph and Hardik. Now they're burning away with that arcane fire. Vonsi really wants to keep going for this one. Hardik will be the fight. Oh, man. Vonsi making the plays yet again and actually doing a bit of a cheeky recall animation there. Very strong stuff out of Team Solo mid. Oh, my goodness. Vonsi is feeling himself right now. I mean, sometimes the aggression can backfire. And we, we talk about no fear, just fight. 
Oh, this guy, he's just absolutely dominating. I, I don't think he lets off the gas at all here. Yeah, he really hasn't been so far. And right now, moving on to the side of Cloud9's jungle, he might be trying to steal away some camps too. When it comes to Hardek up against Vonsi in the jungle, I feel like Hardek is going to have a very hard time. I like the rotation, just trying to get Hardek that little bit more farm, but I'm unsure if it's going to work out here. Flash does spot out Hardek. That's the vanguard to speed up Vonsi. He drifting dark. Look at these malices and verdicts. Hardek, he might not even be able to get away here. One more could do it. Hardek, he gets the on point. He's so close. Oh! To Vonsi finds another kill. He's 4 0. He, he alone has more than one kill per minute. I think, you know, like, it reminds me of I did some some MVP interviews earlier, and I asked, like, what point did you realize that you won the game? I think Vonsi is going to be like about, <laughs> about two and a half minutes in. I think you might say the draft. I don't know. Oh, I That's don't how know. Vonsi rolls, right? But yeah, stealing away these back camps, getting a significant gold lead for his team, closing that 1,000 mark at this point. Team Solo mid not letting off the brakes at all here, Cloud9. How do they scale, though? I mean, Hardik on that Black Feather can certainly do a lot of work later. Both of these teams actually scale pretty well. And I think while you are dominating, you can't start to make any mistakes Whoa. on this Cloud9 lineup. Yeah, talking about mistakes, this might have been a big one from Hardik. He tries to rotate down, immediately gets blown up. Vonsi is on fire right now. Look at the verdict coming across. Joseph, he's trying to get behind Whoa. the turret. One more attack would do it. They don't want to take that risk, though. Team Solo mid showing discipline there. I'm not sure I would have been able to show that much discipline. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's it's incredible to see Von C pulling back in some of these situations where you think he definitely oh, would have dove in the past. That was rude. He was just trying to peek in there, see if Hardeck was going to go back into the jungle. Just rude, <laughs> Von C. Come on. Oh boy, this pressure is pretty ridiculous. Cloud9 is going to need to do something special here to get back in control of this game. Things falling apart a little bit right now. Certainly, like you said, both teams scaling quite well. But the first big item here being picked up on the side of Team Solo Mid, Best Chuck NA going for that alternating current. Yeah, and he's picked it up at a very nice timing. You know, it's not insane, but it's definitely a good timing here. And he'll be able to apply just more and more pressure. I think Cloud9, they have to be careful that they're not engaged on. One of the problems in the last fight is Hardex boots. They had two seconds left on cooldown. That's such a heartbreak. Yeah, it's a tough situation to be in for sure. Hardex getting zoned out behind the turret yet again. The turret itself actually is is quite low. Team Solomon has been doing a good job of just eking out a little bit of damage every single time that wave pushes up. Hardex going to try and farm a little bit, but look at the damage from Best Chuck. Hardex oh, needs oh to get my. out of there. My goodness, look at that. I mean, he almost gets the kill there if he lands those attacks. Oh, Drifting Dark. This could be the setup. Hardex should have left a long time ago. Trying to dive in, maybe find some farm, but it's not going to be enough. Joseph, also very low. Vonsi wants it. Where's that oblivion? Whoa, Whoa tough! Whoa, boy, Toph picking up one return kill finally for Cloud9. All right, Vonsi, that, that was a little bit much. You know what? Well, ship's starting to sink. Lost Boy's like, no, I'm throwing out the Lifesaver team. We got this. And uh, makes the play. They're on the board. It's exactly what Cloud9 need. You know, you have to wait for that moment where any small mistake is made and you take advantage of it. And Cloud9, while their back is against the wall, if they're able to take advantage of any more mistakes moving forward, they'll climb right back into this game. Let's have a look at the itemization across the board. vonsi has got that broken myth now. Best Chuck with the alternating current. Joseph, though, was forced into going for this very early frost mark. Yeah, definitely. I, I think, you know, it's questionable. A lot of times people will say, well, I think Frostburn will work. Maybe it won't. In this case, you look at a hero like Samuel who wants to either fight kiting or moving at you in his drifting dark. If you can slow him down a little bit, he might get forced out of that. And I think it could be a good call here. Well, we'll have to see if it works out. Vonsi certainly has been very aggressive, so I doubt he's going to be doing too much kiting, at least until later stages of the game. The kill lead, 7-1 to one right now, with Team Solo Mid leading around 3,000 gold. Massive advantage for them. They've already taken down this first turret, too, looking to maybe grab some more. Top is 6, though. Keep your eyes on that lifesaver for any of these forced accords. He might be fishing for one sometime soon. Team Solo Mid have to know that this is a possibility. Flash X jumping in onto the turret regardless. Top doesn't find a good quibble there. Joseph also getting poked out a lot. Vonsi looking for a little bit more. Doing so much damage onto Joseph. This is absolutely ridiculous, Humanist. Yeah, Joseph really hasn't built much defense, but if you look at Hardik, Aegis is already completed, and he hasn't really built much offense at all. So his whole thought process right now is I just have to survive. I have to continue to put myself later into the game, get my levels, and this is where Cloud9 will come alive. I mean, when he has the Rose Offensive, Lost Boy hits his level eight, has the overdriven quibble. This team really will hit some large power spikes. It's such a hard position to be in for Hardek where you're forced to build Aegis first before any damage. He's really playing for the late game here. Goldmine started by Team Solo Mid. Obviously, no way for Cloud9 to really contest this one uh, at this point. So that's going to be picked up. Immense payout for Team Solo Mid. 
Moving towards the late game, what is the biggest thing you'd like to see Cloud9 doing in order to, to actually get there? It's tough. I actually, I mean, you look at what Blackfeather brings to your team, and that's the ability to close the gap onto a target. So I hope that a lot of times he's looking for the Adagio. We may see the Atlas come out. Maybe not. Depends. He's not. He doesn't have that much farm. Uh, but they have to also fight around that hook. So you're either going to see the hook used to engage maybe around a turret. That's probably their best call. Either that, or they're going to use the peel and let Hardik focus someone down isolated. Look at the level difference between Hardik and Best Chuck right now. It's a two-level difference, and Best Chuck is about to hit level eight. So it's absolutely massive here. Hardik really struggling in this game so far. Drifting Dark popped. Vonti looking for a bit of damage. The splash is unreal. Joseph going to be going down before he can even contest. Oblivion coming out. It's going to land on the Hardik. He reflex blocks too late. Vonti just waiting for that shield to dissipate. Crucible perfectly timed by Flash Axe, stopping Top from getting anything out of that one. Team Solo Mid are unstoppable right now. Absolutely, and you see that's a 60 second cooldown. Flash is still holding on to his fountain, so they will continue to apply pressure. And honestly, uh, this hole is getting so deep, I don't know if Cloud9 can dig their way out. Yeah, it's really going to take a lot of uh, opportunities for Cloud9 to come back into the game. Team Solomon, not a team known for giving too many of those over. Look, for example, the vision that Flash is putting down in the jungle. Those scout traps are all over the place, and there's very little Cloud9 can do to actually clear those out. When it hits 15 minutes, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these same scout traps are still alive and stopping Cloud9 from contesting. Yeah, we should have a stat man on that, keeping track of all of these scout traps, how long they're actually lasting. But I totally agree with you, and I wanted to mention that earlier. I think Flash has done a great job. You look in, in these competitive games especially, as soon as the team starts to gain control, if you do apply that, that vision down, it just makes it so much easier with a hero like Samuel who wants wow. to be fighting from range. You can see it really clearly when we do this bird's eye view, just how many of those scout traps are there. It's absolutely ridiculous. Look so hard. It. It, it's just perfect symmetry almost coming out there. No smiley faces coming out of Flash, it was though. Close, it was close to a smiley face. A bit more on the left, maybe. A bit more on the left. We'll see if Flash uh -oh. can, can draw with those later. Joseph trying to make something happen. Flash with a beautiful gauntlet over the wall, though, does find that stun. Best Chuck wants to go in here for the damage. Flash needs to be a bit closer. Oh, Joseph, the Surrey Strike, not at all in the right direction. Another hero killed. Four teams solo mid. Things are getting out of control. Things uh, have been out of control, I'd say, a little <laughs> bit, Jackson, to be honest, though. You look at the farm, and while Hardik and Joseph are actually tied in their CS, Best Chuck is essentially doubling them right now, and he is hitting these power spikes faster, his items are coming out, and the levels are there for him as well. Yeah, and you can talk about these items a little bit more, right? Because Best Chuck, he's coming pretty close to that uh, Broken Myth, past which point he's going to be doing so much damage. Flash actually jumping in a little bit there. Vonsi, I love the use of the Drifting Dark there along the side. Joseph and Hardek getting taken very low. Vonsi using that Drifting Dark to just allow him to move around the periphery of the fight, throwing out those Malices and Verdicts. And with the passive that he has, the heroic perk, he can sustain so well in a siege. Oh, he definitely can. And you're going to see, they're just going to poke, they're going to heal back up. And Flash, he's oh. done such a great job of holding onto his fountains this game. I mean, you've got the heroic perk from Samuel, but you've also got a heal from Adagio as well, right? I mean, the amount of sustain on Vonsi is ridiculous. You add a Vanguard into the mix, and how do you actually dive onto the backline here? I do think we got to talk a little bit more about the draft. Cloud9 brought out the Black Feather. Sure, that was creative. It was interesting. It hasn't worked at all, though. I, I know this is like a really tough play to make, but I almost feel like Cloud9 are forced into a position where you have to use the Force Decord to split the team. And it's good. it will be Black Feather and Sky diving onto a target in the back and a Force Decord to pull the other two away. And if they could do something like that, they might be able to isolate a target and kill them and snowball off that. Well, it's going to be a hard-pressed situation for Cloud9 it's here. A Lost Boy. tough situation. Lost Boy is the only one with the kill right now on the roam. Stealing it away. Lost boy, he's uh, you know he's the highlight factory though. And if if you are down uh, on a team like this, you'd expect he's he's the one that's going to be picking up the kill. It's only 12 minutes into the game, humanist, and already we're seeing such a tremendous lead. 7,000 now, almost exactly for Team Solo mid. They are so far ahead that at this point, Cloud9, I, I would almost say the things you were talking about earlier, the the concepts that they might try and use to come back into the game, mm -hmm. are no longer on the table really. What they need is for Team Solo mid to make a mistake. They do, but I, they almost need both of these things to happen at the same time, and they may or may not hear. Oh, Flash X going right in with that gauntlet, knocking Joseph back into the gauntlet wall. He goes down immediately. Von C wasn't really even in the fight to begin with. Now he's jumping onto the back line, going for top, going for Hardek. Oblivion on the Sanctuary is not going to be enough to catch Hardek out. But with two more kills under their belts, Team Solo mid looking towards another turret. 
Yeah, they're gonna go ahead and get this choke point turret. And we talked about it, like this is such a strategical position on any map. Once this goes down, it definitely takes a lot more work to go ahead and defend your base. You're gonna see this coming out right here. A nice gauntlet coming down. And the problem is Joseph actually not reflex block as he Suri strikes backwards. He goes down. Lost boy, he's gonna be cleaned up quite easily moving forward. Best Shuck's damage is immense. Hardek saved as he rose defensively into that spawn point. You know, I love that one. Von C, I want to mention the fact that he's got an Eve of Harvest now real quick, because on top of the sustain we already mentioned, this is just putting him past a point where Cloud9 have the damage, even in an extended fight, to really take him down. I, I think we need to see one more item out of Joseph. That's probably the big power spike on the side of Cloud9. He, but also, what about an infusion, right? Exactly. And as you said, an infusion comes out. But he would probably like to have just maybe one piece of defense. He would like to have that infusion, maybe tier two boots. But he does have tools to potentially get in there and win a fight right now. He is not absolutely crushed, though it does look pretty bad. Sky is one of these heroes that can make the outplays. You know, if you just use your Surrey Strike really well, if he actually gets the reflex block on the gauntlet to maybe reposition, he can sit on the back line long enough to get the Broken Myth stacks up and start doing some good damage. Exactly, but you know, the gauntlet coming out of Flash last time, it just canceled any of that aggression or building up of stacks coming out of Joseph. And if you're not able to reflex block and move backwards out of the gauntlet, which is, you know, I think debatably one of the easier abilities to reflex block and get out of, then you're not going to be winning these fights. Toph just picked up a Crucible. That might help out a little bit for Joseph, but look at this. Team Solo mid being sneaky sausages here in the bush. Do get flared out, but C9 are too close when they throw it. Gauntlet comes across. This time, Joseph is on the backside. Hardek is taking so much damage, though. He might even go down just as the Gift of Fire has to use that reflex block. Lost Boy Toph going to be the sacrificial lamb for Cloud9. Team Solo mid, no mercy right now. Oh, Team Solo Mid, you're making me smile right now just at these plays. Honestly, they know that they have a massive advantage coming into this. And this is when you're going to see players, teams start to hide in bushes like that. And Cloud9, they're going to move out. They're going to have to flare every single bush. You're already down. And that's that much more money that Pop has to spend on this vision. I do think, though, that Cloud9 needs to make sure they're flaring from a safe distance. That was basically a point-blank flare. Exactly. At that point, you're too close. But that's one of those bushes where you don't actually fight from that often. But you'll see when teams are really snowballing, that's a place that they actually like to hide. All right, two infusions picked up now on Vonsi and Best Chuck and A right in time for this Kraken. But C9 knows that they need to stop this from going across. Infusion Team popped. Solo mid could be looking to end things right here. Vonsi coming across with the Drifting Dark. Everyone's in the choke point for C9. They get absolutely obliterated. Vonsi is very deep, but the damage isn't there yet from Joseph or Hardek. Hardek trying to walk back in. Chuck finally using a verse this game. Does so much damage. Vonsi should just be able to clean up shop right now. He's looking for a little bit more. Drifting Dark again. Joseph trying oh. to connect the splash damage on the minions. Nearly doing enough by itself. Flash X, Candy Vanguard, Vonsi close enough. He picks up the kill. Wow. Team Solo mid with another ace. They're already in the base. This is going to be game one to TSM. Man, there is a look of confusion on the faces of Cloud9 right now as they just got rolled over by Team Solo mid. What a performance out of oh, this man. squad right here. The, the thing is, a lot of times with this guy, <laughs> Lost Boy's like, hey, we're, we're not completely over yet. He's going to have some fun. But <laughs> this guy, you know, he's trying to fight from range with the, with that Ford Barrage coming out. But it's just nothing compared to Samuel when he's in that Drifting Dark. The, 